Dart sent us their brand new Iron Eagle engine at its max bore limit of 88 millimeters. We paired this up with a 96 millimeter stroke to make a 3.5 liter 2JZ and then paired it to Precision's all new 8685 next gen turbocharger. We ran this to Precision's turbo speed limit and made over 1800 horsepower and 1200 foot pounds of torque while using a factory style head gasket and factory oiling systems as well. Here's exactly how we did it. testing here is this is the first time that VC has done a lightweight 4340 crank at this type of power or torque. So they know that we are putting it under some extreme test. We also are using their HD H beam in this. So all of this is kind of outside of their envelope, but they know that we're testing on it. But let the compressor make the horsepower with the RPM basically, rather than the torque make it and full Dorado. We could stop at any torque value and flatten that out. That's what I'm saying. Why exactly did we decide to go with a stroker on this build? To me, the stroker engine is simply a larger muscle. And in flexing that muscle, it can do more things. It's also more versatile. It will uh, have better and more predictable part throttle response. It'll bring up a turbocharger earlier than a otherwise similar but smaller engine. Uh, it's really just better everywhere until you get to a platform or component limitation. That's why we're so excited to test the biggest version of what a 2JZ can be and see how stable the platform is now. So this basically takes the big displacement 2JZ and goes one step further both on bore and on stroke. So the dart block offers us uh, an 88 millimeter service limit as opposed to the 87 millimeter service limit on the OE block and the vast majority of 2JZ strokers in the world for the last decade plus have been 94 millimeter stroke. In this one, we're testing the 96 millimeter uh, lightweight 4340 crank from Brian Crower. Um, it offers us a Honda journal, so we get a slightly smaller uh, big end of the rod, a little bit less bearing speed, but we're able to get a slightly larger engine that still fits within the uh, packaging of the block. What are some of the challenges we expected going into this program? Some of the challenges that we expected to face going into this were the H-beam rod, the lightweight crankshaft, the very uh, thin compression height piston. We knew that all these parts would be pushed to their absolute limits, as well as the factory Toyota oiling system with the wet sump oil pump and um, oil pan. And in terms of the dart block, that was already at its maximum service bore limit of 88 millimeters, right? Right. So that's going to put the dart block into its theoretical weakest state. Obviously, it performed very well. Uh, and the, another thing that we really wanted to test here was the thicker deck of the dart block allowing us to potentially get back to a traditional head gasket while retaining an 11 millimeter stock size head stud. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was another thing that we knew was far beyond what we would have pushed uh, a, an OE block to because we witnessed uh, a lot of deck shuffling hundreds of horsepower earlier than when we did with this block, even on our first attempt. Right, the OEM doesn't have the ability to keep the rigidity on the deck surface as the dart does, right? Yeah, in the past to get uh, the gas get the seal at this sort of power level, we would have moved to a firing setup. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then 
People are gonna ask, why did we only stop at 1800? I know that the turbo is rated to that 1800 mark, but could we have gone a little bit more? So we went into this test with only two hard limits. I wanted to stop at 8400 RPM due to the wet sump oiling, and we were going to try to get the turbocharger to its uh, speed limit. Uh, and so the shaft speed limit from Precision is roughly 120,000 RPM on this, and so on our last test at 69.5 PSI, we were able to get it up to about 122,000 RPM, so we're right where, they, right where they wanted us to test it to. You know, I think we ended up doing 35 or 40 1500-ish horsepower pulls. So while this isn't a massive use case uh, or data set, it's a very exciting experiment for us to see how all these parts live together. What were some of the significant findings from this round of testing? So some of the significant findings from this round of testing would be first and foremost, the turbocharger did exactly as advertised. When we put it right at the speed limit, it made exactly what they said it was supposed to make. Uh, it behaved very, very well, even with 100 pounds of exhaust pressure. Uh, we might have a new baseline for what a stock style 2JZ is able to look like now. Um, if the added rigidity of the deck is going to give us a new threshold for uh, fastener and gasket approach to 15, 1600 horsepower, if we take this engine apart and the bearings all look happy, even with the factory oiling system, you know, that's going to be a very exciting first test to build on for us as we uh, get testing further with these start blocks. What's next for this engine? So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to um, take it apart. In the 1800 horsepower pass, we actually did notice a little bit of coolant pressure trace in the log. And when it comes back, we'll put it back together with a larger turbo and uh, try to make over 2000. Obviously, we're going to be documenting the whole teardown process and sharing that with you guys each step of the way. Like always, let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys. Pablo and Mark here from Real Street Performance. Today we put hands on the <laughs> I'm not sure what to do with my hands. <laughs>